This is Twit. The Windows 11 live event took place this morning. Uh, they just announced Windows 11, and I am pumped to say that we have CNET's own Ian Schur here to join us to give us a rundown of what Windows announced. Welcome back to the show, Ian. How you doing? I am doing well. I know we don't have you for too long, so I would love to get right into it. Um, of course, the, the the event kicked off, and we, we got a very almost stern, uh, very sort of um, moodily sincere uh, Panos Pane talking about what Which Windows we always is going do. to provide. Yes, yes, exactly, yep. as is normal. Um, and this was all about, uh, you know, the, the, the different events kind of have keywords, and this one was all about home and connect. And uh, can you tell us um, what... Uh, what are some of the big features of Windows 11 that uh, really stood out to you um, and maybe some that were shocking or, or that were a surprise at the very least? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously the design is really interesting. I, you know, I, I keep thinking about the start menu has been on the bottom left of a ton of people's screens since 1995. And now they're going to move it to the middle, which is very phone and tablet-like. So that alone is going to be a huge shift for a lot of people who are, you know, not used to Windows changing this much. Uh, the designs in general, I think, make it look a lot more modern. But the biggest changes actually are under the hood. They're doing stuff like making it work a lot better with Android apps. So suddenly, on top of there being a ton of Windows apps, now there's going to be support for Android, which in and of itself is going to be very interesting, right? Different games, different apps, different capabilities are going to be coming into these computers. They're also making it so that Microsoft Teams, this video chat service that you know, started off as this kind of enterprise office thing. It became really big during the pandemic, as did Zoom. And so now they're building it into Windows in a very similar way that Apple has built, built FaceTime into Macs. But unlike FaceTime, where you only have it on an Apple computer, in Windows you can have a, a Teams on an iPhone, on an Android, on any device. So they're, in a way, trying to take on FaceTime. And then probably the other thing that really stood out to me, at least, was their integration with Xbox. You know, the, the Xbox team has always been that kind of, you know, other part of Microsoft in a, in a building over on the other side of campus. And they've never really truly integrated it into Windows. And they're actually building like a special Xbox app and they're trying to make it work a lot better with all the games. They say it's going to have a lot of the features that the Xbox have had, like auto HDR, which makes older games look a lot better and all of these types of things. So, you know, together it all really is about refinement, I feel, but also trying to upgrade a lot of, uh, update a lot of the visuals, make it feel a lot more modern. Yeah. Yeah, um, the yeah the modernity, I guess, of the of the platform was interesting. Um, let's let's talk a little bit more about the um, the Android stuff because yeah. that was uh, something that that stood out, and it was interesting how little. Uh, so, uh, Twits, Leo Laporte, and um, Windows Weekly's Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thorat uh, all covered the event this morning, and they all remarked about how little time was spent on talking about uh, these apps coming to right. the uh, to, to Windows. Is do you think that's because it's via the Amazon App Store versus the Google Play Store? Is that why there wasn't as much attention paid, or is it just because? It's they don't see it as such a big feature. I guess is this uh, it, should folks be looking forward to a long term support of Android apps on Windows, which would be uh, you know the, the kind of the first case, or is it just that yeah? And also we did this, just kind of an added feature that they saw. I, I'm going to be curious to see that myself. I think that making it available in the first place is is pretty interesting. I mean they've been playing with. Android apps on Microsoft Windows for a long time. So they must have some data about how successful it's been. And the fact that they're still willing to invest in it says something, I think. But the reality is you say, oh, you know, it, a lot of people know what Android is, right? It's the most popular software on the planet. So, <laughs> you know, you don't need a lot of explanations for what it is. Oh, I can play, you know, Words with Friends Android Edition now on my computer, great, right? And I think that what they really wanted to focus on a lot more was the things that's going to make it special, right? To make Windows mm -hmm. special. And 
the reality is that they have ceded the floor over the last six years, years in a lot of way to people like Apple and Google who have really taken up the mantle of being, you know, the 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 places that are really focused on design, right? I mean, Google's event uh, just, just a couple of months ago was all about the material you, right? Making it feel a lot more personal. Apple has been pushing these ideas really strong and bringing its Apple and, and bringing its Macs and its iPhones together visually in a lot of ways. Microsoft has kind of just sat there continue being Microsoft. So I think in a lot of ways they wanted to focus on how they've really thought through here is how we're going to offer something different and not just here's another update to Windows 10. That, uh, see, that's, that's interesting. Um, this it, it, I have to say, it reminded me a little bit of, and people will probably get mad, but reminded me a little bit visually of Windows Vista, which is one of the least popular <laughs> versions of Windows. Um, Hopefully with better like, security. <laughs> yes, better better everything. Um, the the translucency and, and um, the sort of animations and all that that they were focusing on here. Uh, but the big thing, I think, is just the uh, idea that this works um, across all sorts of of um, work. What, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It works across all sorts of contexts. Can we talk about yes. kind of context switching between your work life, your home life, your gaming life, uh, which could be separate, I guess, from your home life, and how Windows is supposed to be helping with that? Yeah, I, I remember talking to a lot of people, and I've, I've learned there are a lot of weird ways people use Windows, right? I mean, everyone does things differently, and they think differently. There are people out there who have different accounts on their computers for when they're gaming, when they're at work, and all the apps are different on the on the desktop, and maybe it looks different, and, you know, they got a different wallpaper, all sorts of stuff. Well, Microsoft wants to make that a little easier. So what they're doing is they're actually making it so you can set up kind of a whole setup of the apps you want to run, the documents you want to have open, all these things, and kind of connect it all together and make it really easy for you to be able to just switch into work mode. And mm -hmm. I think it's really smart. It's something that they've been playing with already with their timeline feature, which is not very broadly used from what I can tell. I've never, I've never really heard many people talk about it outside of Microsoft, but the, the idea that you can have kind of a bunch of your different documents and websites kind of put together and easily accessible across all of your devices. Now that they're really pushing heavily on this, I think it's, it's going to be an opportunity for them to say, look, we realize a lot of you are working at home and we realize a lot of you are not going back to an office. And so we want to make it so that you feel comfortable using your computer both for work and for home. And I think that that is going to be a really interesting line to walk. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there was a, a brief mention of uh, how if you're not docking, you should be docking. Um, yes. <laughs> and one of, the <laughs> one of the things that came with that, though, was uh, Windows kind of memory of how you have things set up on your different devices. I am yeah. um, a Mac user and have been for a long time, but that idea of if I've got these split screens set up how I want them and I've got them, you know, just so where I plug in again and it kicks back off where I was is really interesting um, on its own, a great feature. But when you pair it with this, if you look at um, Microsoft's own devices, you see kind of how they see their devices or their, their uh, operating system being used. And they really are all about this hybrid switch between this, switch between that context, not only with the software, but with the hardware. So do you think that this speaks to a continuation of the uh, convertibles and portables that, that Microsoft makes itself and that uh, some third party uh, manufacturers also make? Maybe. I mean, I think that they realized that for a lot of people, again, getting back to this hybrid work situation, right? A lot of people now are, I mean, I've got two work laptops sitting here. I admit I'm somewhat of a nerd, but I would at least have one in addition to the one I've the own one I own, right? And I think what they realize is that people are with this whole work from home thing that's been going on people are getting big monitors, right? People are getting all sorts of peripherals. And a lot of people sit on their, uh, their, their, 
their living room couch or on their uh, dining room table, and they plug in their mouse and everything. It's really annoying. It's all over the place. And they kind of, Microsoft says, look, a lot of you can make this a lot easier on yourself. Use a dock, use a, use a, use a really nice monitor, and suddenly it's a lot easier to use. And I think that's part of why they also moved the start menu to the middle of the screen, is that it's a lot easier for you to mouse your your way down to the bottom of the screen when it's in the middle than all <laughs> the way to the left side. And, it, you know, it's again, it's kind of that modernity thing, right? Like a lot of people were using monitors with their laptops, but I imagine, I don't have the data, but I imagine it's gotten way bigger now that, the, now that a lot of people are working from home. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and the, the touch target switching whenever you undid the the device they were showing and then the uh, icons would spread out a little bit. And yeah, just those those little touches and details uh, that were really cool, I think, for them to show off. Um, I guess my, my last question for you was just did any was there anything else uh, that, that took place during this announcement other than the buffering that kept happening um, <laughs> that stood out to you or anything else from this Windows 11 announcement that you want to share with the, the viewers here? Yeah, one thing I'm really curious to see how people respond to is that Microsoft's going to have a, a requirement that is very interesting, specifically with Windows Home. There's another talk of this TPM situation, which, you know, for the ultra nerds out there, right, the, the trusted computing programming and all of that. But th that's a side issue. I think what's really interesting is that with Windows Home, right, the, the kind of entry level version, which Microsoft said is the most widely used, they're going to require you to effectively activate your Windows. And you'll have to have an account on Microsoft. You're going to have to have an internet connection to get this computer even running the first time. After that, you can do whatever you want. But Microsoft wanting to do that, they said, look, we, we want to be able to keep track of how your safety is doing, how many software upgrades you've got. Oh, they say that a lot of times when they get requests for support, it's software updates and security updates are the number one thing that aren't being done. So in a lot of ways, this is their attempt to try and fix that. But it also means that I'm bow and chaining myself a little bit more to Microsoft than I might have before. Yeah, you're going to have to be, um, it, it, it's like uh, when you get those annoying pop-ups to, uh, to update and you're like, yeah, I don't really exactly. need you to tell me that. I know I have an update. Of course, I always, as it, and I'm sure you do too as a technologist, always encourage people update their software. Um, so in that way, I'm kind of happy about this. But with that came the announcement that there would only be one uh, new feature pack that, that goes out each year. Um, so yeah. the updates will slow down significantly, which I think is, um, I, th I have a feeling a lot of people in IT are very happy about that. Um, <laughs> but yes, there is certainly an issue where these devices are going to need to be connected. And of course, there's always going to be some situation where someone needed to start up a new computer and they completely forgot about needing the internet connection and they're out in the middle. Yeah. I don't know, they've gone hiking and uh, they just want to watch this show on their, their convertible Windows machine and they can't I do because that all they the can't time. get the thing started. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, th those, are, those things happen all the time. Very rare.